Well, if you're like me, stuck in the house for the last several weeks with the coronavirus deal going on, I predict there'll be plenty more weeks of that to keep going, so, so hell, I'll make some YouTube videos. Um, anyone who knows me, um, probably nobody, uh, my specialty or what I consider to be my specialty is building pneumatic props. Uh, uh, pneumatic, pneumatic applications, building mechanisms, different armatures and stuff to make, uh, bring my props to life, I guess. Um, everything from air amplifiers to specialty air cylinders, um, solenoid valves, air manifold, solenoid valves, um, air regulators, uh, flow control valves, um, so starting with uh, the basics, basically just uh, what I started with when I started working on this up about 15 years ago was cylinder, air cylinders. And I started off with uh, buying stuff like uh, kits from monsterguts.com and uh, fright props and stuff. And they were great. Uh, a lot of directions with it and stuff. And But after a while I got wanted to do bigger stuff and different stuff. And I started doing some work for different people and little some businesses in my area so I just make a video <clears throat> basically I'm just bored so anyway so these are just different various types of air cylinders or or movers <clears throat> anywhere from the, the dual rod <clears throat> cylinders back here that are um, they move slower as far as the air inputs they're all 1 8 inch MPT air inputs and they move slower, but they have a lot more power. Uh, some of them are non-rotating. Some are not. Some are, I have these ones here, like this has got the three rods on it. Um, and then uh, different cylinders. Um, it's not moving. Some of them are really small. Some of them are really big. Um, so one of the questions that I'm asked the most is... How long will these props last once you build them? And to that, the answer is, depends on how you build them, how well you build them, uh, what parts you use. So, air cylinders, with the, you're working with a lot of air pressure. You're working with about 80 to 100 pounds of air pressure a lot of times. And a lot of cylinders, small cylinders like this, or cylinders that have a, a really narrow bore like this, uh, you potentially you know, with a high air pressure it's going to move extremely fast such as like something like this which is what I use for uh, pneumatic electric chairs and stuff so um, so as far as how long your props going to last that's uh, going to there's a lot of factors going to determine I think one of the most important ones is controlling the, the airflow and so this is how that is done this, the airflow regulator it determine it uh, allows you to control how fast the air moves in and out of the actual uh, ports that are on the cylinder. So the more you you can tighten it or loosen it, the fat, all that's going to do is uh, change the speed. Um, you have it at a set air pressure, so it's going to have the strength to move or lift your props and everything. But this is going to control the speed that this cylinder is going to move. That way, if if it moves too fast in your prop, it could destroy your prop or it could, you know, um, put like unnecessary wear on a prop. Um, but by being able to control this stuff, it's going to give you a, the exact amount of uh, speed of movement that you want. And it's not going to be throwing your prop around. Um, so, like I said, a lot of them, really small cylinders for, for several things. Um... I'll say most of the stuff that I've done uses the larger cylinders like these, uh, like electric chair, props, um, lifters, these things and stuff like this would be used for uh, like a lifter. A lot of the mechanisms you'd see at like DC props or uh, one of the other places. 